Hello guys, welcome to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Workshop. Today I'm going to show you the lower end of the Nexo 2 rocket. As we have talked about previously, we have taken the rocket inside in the uh, small heated part of our workshop because it's very cold here in Copenhagen. And we are in the process of, of checking out all the final things on the rocket before launching it this summer. And even though launch is probably a couple of months ahead of us, we need to be sure that everything is working. So that's why we are, we are looking everything over right now. Last summer, while we were preparing for launch, we identified some small leaks in the system. So this weekend, the team has gone over the entire piping system of the, of the rocket with, uh, with uh, soap water and magnifying glasses to see if they could identify the sources of the leaks. And the leaks were mainly in the helium high pressure system. And th th those leaks have now been, been identified. So we are almost ready to assemble the entire rocket again. But, but before we do that, I just wanted to show you the most interesting part of the rocket, namely the part where we have the, the engine. And if we start at the top, you can see up here we have the pipework coming in from the tanks. We have one pipe coming down in the middle here from the lower tank, and then we have the other one coming in here and going down the side of the rocket. This box here connected with all these connectors and insulated wires. This is the engine controller. This is one of the computers that control the Nexio rocket. This computer controls everything that has to do with the engine, all the sensors and instrumentation we have down here. And then it communicates with the, um, with the other end of the rocket, where I, I, and I will show you that in a later, in a later video where we have all the, uh, the rest of the electronics equipment, the guidance and control system and all that. It sends commands up there and also telemetry and commands from this uh, unit is being, being sent uh, via radio so that we can communicate with the rocket from, from ground. And if we move down a little bit further, you can see down here we have on each side our two main valves. These are the valves that control the fuel flow to the engine. One controls the flow of ethanol and the other one the flow of liquid oxygen. The gearboxes that you see here is actually uh, something that we have custom made uh, to fit onto the gearboxes that comes from the, uh, the manufacturer and then we have the, the engine it's, uh, or the, uh, the motor itself up here. These, uh, these motors are digitally controlled so that the engine controller can send them commands and then they can open and close at very, very small angles so we can control the flow very efficiently to the engine. And then moving down, we have the BPM5 engine right here. This particular engine has been tested a few times already in our test stand and uh, the injector mounted in this engine is actually the same injector that we flew uh, with uh, Nexo 1. Uh, when we took Nexo 1 out of the water and we uh, disassembled it and cleaned it, the injector was in pristine condition, so there was uh, no reason why we shouldn't uh, use that injector again. And, and, and other, uh, other than that, we have, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, pressure sensors and temperature sensors placed uh, all over, the, uh, all over the, the engine so that we have uh, enough data for the engine controller during a flight. And if we move over here, <coughs> I have, I have uh, taken this little uh, piece of hardware so that I can show you how the engine works. If you have seen one of the last videos we did, I showed you on a big engine how uh, a rocket engine works. And this is a cut up of the uh, BPM-5 engine where you can see that this engine is the same overall principle as the big engine that I showed you the last time. The, the fuel is pumped in here into a manifold and then the fuel runs along the side of the engine down here and is pushed up in this part of the engine where we have the injector and the injector is then mixing the uh, liquid oxygen and the fuel. It is pushed down into the engine and combusted and then it will come out of the throat down here and produce the, the thrust of the engine. So that is the principle of 
the uh, the uh, the BPM5 engine. As you can see, the BPM5 engine is actually not very very big. It's uh, it's not much bigger than a than a big uh, thermo bottle really. Uh, but this small engine is able to push the entire Nixie rocket here and produce a thrust of 500 kilograms. And we estimate that with the improvements we have made on the dynamic pressure regulating system of Nixie 2, we will be able to fly to between 10 and 15 kilometers this summer. Remember that Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit, all-volunteer project. We all work for free, and the reason why we can build these magnificent machines and share it all with you is because of all our fans from all over the world. So please go to our website and sign up as a Copenhagen Suborbital supporter, because it's your donation that makes everything possible. Thank you, Rocket fans. Can we